Okay, today we're, we're going to be focusing on our second step in this process, which is taking our guitar body shape and the tool that we just created in the tool library and creating the 2D profiling cutout of the actual body process. We're going to begin by setting up our general stock and structure behind our uh, cutting profile. So we're going to begin by using under the manufacturing area we're going to be using the setup tool and in the setup tool there's a couple of changes that we need to make to the basic setup. First the origin is going to be the model origin and for stem guitar our model origin is now the center bottom of the neck pocket and this is standard for all of our designs. We'll also make sure that there's only one body selected and that that body is highlighted in the space. And it's a milling process that we're going to be doing. And so as we move forward, we're going to need to make some modifications in the stock. And so in the stock, we don't want to add uh, any additional stock. So we're going to say no additional stock. And so we don't want any additional stock added to the sides or to the top of our cutout. We'll maintain this relative size box. And in the third post process, we're going to go ahead and, and put a comment of that this is our custom profile. And if your machine requires that WCS offset, and again, the WCS offset allows us to have multiple setups for the same uh, tooling and processing, which is also part of that tooling and machining uh, setup, that's the case. So if we were at Sinclair Community College, which is where this is based out of, we'd have a WCS offset of two which again, this is a number, it's not a value uh, with units, it's just a number to say that we're going to be working on a second offset. If your system does not necessarily have that offset, you can leave it as 0 or 1. Now that we've got those set, and again, we may or may not need that offset, but once those are set, then we can go ahead and choose OK. And so you can see the actual body shape now in a profile block, which is similar to our um, body blank, um, the body spreads that we work with. So now that we've completed our setup, we're going to be creating a 2D contour as our profiling tool. And so as we start this, there's a series of different tabs that we're going to need to make some modifications with. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is select our tool. And so we go to select our tool. It's in our library that we just created, and we're going to select our quarter inch cutter. So now that we've completed the setup process, we're going to begin the process of creating our 2D contour. But before we do that, there's a couple of things we need to set up. First, we want to make sure that our sketch under our model is turned on. And so our body profile sketch needs to be available because that's what we're going to be selecting to actually cut out our shape. And so I'm going to turn the body profile sketch layer on. And again, I can roll this back up so it won't get in our way. Now that we have our setup completed, we're going to begin the process of choosing a 2D contour. And so the 2D contour has a variety, and I'm going to go ahead and flip this around to the front so it's easier for us to see, it has a variety of different tabs that we need to, to set up. The first item that we need to focus on is our tool. And if you remember, we set up the tool library already, and so I'm going to go ahead and choose the lab library that we just set up with our quarter inch milling cutter. 
We'll choose OK and it'll bring in all of our feeds and speeds information automatically. This is why you want to do the tool library ahead of time. The second is our geometry. And so I'm going to need to select some contour selections. And in this case, what I'm going to do is select the two relief lines of our profile that we created to, to do the neck relief, because this is our first operation. So we're going to cut the, the relief lines in. Once I've selected those two relief lines, you want to make sure that the arrows are on the upper side or the outer side of those lines. If the arrows are not, then just go ahead and click the arrow and it will reverse the location and direction of the cutter head. And in this case, both selected properly so I didn't have to flip the arrow to the opposite side. Our third tab is our Heights tab. And this is really important because if we don't set the height properly, we'll cut either too deep or not deep enough. And so our height is going to be based on, or the bottom height of our cutter, cutting tool is going to be based on our model height, our model top height. And it's going to be a negative 0.7. Now why 0.7? Our neck pockets are typically 0 0.74, 0 0.75. We want to make sure that we don't cut all the way into the neck pocket in case the tool drags across the neck pocket. You don't want that tooling mark there. So we'll make sure that we don't cut all the way to that pocket. And again, this is a relief cut, so it's not a situation to where uh, it's going to be removed or it's a critical uh, component it is to help to prevent the chip out. The fourth tab is the passes. We have a couple of setup items in the number of passes that we're going to do. And the thing is is that the passes tab <coughs> excuse me, the passes tab needs to be rolled up so we can go to multiple depths. So our next tab is our Passes tab. And what's unique about the Passes tab is that it always expands in the Passes. However, we're going to roll this up and go down to the Multiple Depths. In Multiple Depths, we're give, we have some settings that we need to make. Our maximum roughing pass, uh, excuse me, our maximum roughing pass step down is going to be 0.1. So we're only going to be cutting in 0.1 and the same is for the finishing step down. It's also going to be 0.1. And the whole idea behind having this set up as our maximum roughing de depth step down, it's going to do seven very small passes. Again, we're trying to eliminate any tear out. And so you can control tear out in a variety of ways, cutter speed, cutting location, but wood is wood and we don't know if there's any hidden defects in the wood. Um, and so taking a precaution, we're not going to take very deep cuts uh, for this particular relief cut environment. In the last tab, which is the linking tab, there are no changes in this particular tab. And so we are now finished with our first operation. We'll choose OK. And you'll see that it actually has now created a cutting tool operation called Contour 2. I highly suggest that you slow click and add relief cut onto this particular process that we've just done. Our second process is actually going to be cutting out the actual profile. And so you can see that it puts the cutting head here and we can animate and we'll do that here in just a minute of how that whole process will work. 
So we're going to again go ahead and choose the 2D contour, create the 2D contour. Uh, our tool is going to be the same, quarter inch cutter, it has already been selected, it's brought in the information. The geometry in this case is going to be the outside profile. And so I want to make sure that the whole profile of the guitar body is selected. Okay, the whole profile all the way around the guitar body. If you remember, we added extra lines in to ensure that we get a very clean profile. And again, the arrow should be to the outside of the profile um, of the guitar body. So with this particular uh, guitar body, we've now selected the, the contour, but we also need to add in tabs. And so we add in tabs, and we don't do it per spacing, okay? So we're actually going to be creating triangular tabs. And why triangular? Because it actually cuts faster, because you, you don't have as much ramp up, ramp down speed. It allows you to, to mitigate the starting and stopping of creating a rectangle tab, uh, with the triangular tab shape. We're also going to make our tabs pretty stout. Um, the width of the tab is going to be one inch. And the height of the tab is going to be 0.75, or about three quarters of an inch. Now the tab positioning is not going to be by distance. We're going to pick the tab locations. I highly suggest picking tab locations uh, that are around the guitar body on the outside but not in a deep recessed area because it's hard to sand those tabs. One request that we do have and, and that we put a tab right in line with the bolt for the uh, hold down process. And so this particular tab here at the bottom is going to be in line. And so what that will do is this will ensure, in this case it's not a big deal, but if your guitar body was really close to the no-fly zone, this would ensure that the collet goes over the bolt as it gets close to the bottom of the or bottom of the guitar body blank. And so I'm going to go ahead and put in several other tabs. And again, I'm just selecting on the profile line, and the tabs are being created in those locations. And so I'm creating about four or five tabs overall. So I've got my tabs in place. And what this does is this prevents the guitar body from shifting once it gets close to finishing cutting out the whole uh, process. So I've got the, the different um, tabs done. There are no other settings on this particular item, so we're going to move over to heights. And again, the height is going to be based on the model top. So the model top is our key component. And since our body blank thickness is 1.75, we're going to go a negative 1.77. And this is going to, be, going to ensure that the bit cuts all the way through the bottom of the guitar blank and into our sacrificial board. Again, we're going to be doing multiple passes, uh, multiple depth cuts. So we're going to roll up the passes, choose multiple depths, and in this case, the cutting depth is going to be 0.22. Now, rule of thumb has Let's go ahead and clean that up, 0.22. Rule of thumb is that you, your cutting depth should be no more than the diameter of your bit. And so 0.22 is a safe um, multiple pass depth. And so when it processes the actual tooling paths, it's going to cut down almost a full quarter inch. Now, if you're using a much larger diameter bit, say a half inch or a three eighths inch diameter bit, your actual cutting depth can be um, as deep as the diameter of the bit itself. So 
we want to use even step downs as part of this process so it's going to adjust the step downs and we're going to take off the rough final so we're not going to do a final a rough final um, process and we're not going to do order by islands either and so we're just going to have use even step downs checked off in the last tab the only thing that you could adjust is the safe distance value um, if the tooling path comes up with an error message and again that's something that we may run into um, as we go through this process and if it is we'll come back and do the editing that we need to to adjust this but there are no other changes that we're going to set up for this we choose OK we now have another uh, 2d contour I'm going to go ahead and rename this as body profile and again as as you go through the process naming uh, these particular uh, components is really important it makes the process so much easier when you um, accomplish uh, the uh, other aspects of cutting pockets and so forth just makes it easier for you to see what you're doing on each of your tooling passes so you can see that now that I've changed it to a three-dimensional shot you can see the different tooling cutting depths and you can also see how it's going to ramp up and ramp down our tabs we can animate and simulate this process also so I'm going to go ahead and back this out right, we're going to right mouse click on the setup and on the setup we could simulate and what it will do is it'll first simulate the cutter the relief cuts and then it will do the body profile and so we can start the simulation by hitting the play button at the bottom middle here and you can see that it's doing the relief cuts one and two it then comes down and the one thing that we didn't do is pick our starting spot and so we probably need to go back and pick a new starting spot because having the starting spot right by the bolt not something that you will want to do all the time so it's a good idea to always run the simulation to find out if there's any changes or modifications and so there is and so what we want to do is uh, close the simulation come back to this contour boat body profile and edit it and we'll bring the profile back up and so under the linking is where we can set our entry position location and so a good a good rule of thumb is picking an entry location on the side of your guitar body I'm going to go ahead and pick my entry location here on the side of my guitar body and so that entry location is where the tool is going to start and it's going to ramp down again it's in an open area so if it ramps down um, it, it's in a straight run there's a lot of reasons why I pick that this particular location but again on the sides of your guitar body are much safer for an entry position than at the neck pocket or at just above the no fly zone bolt down we'll choose OK and what it will do is it will reposition the cutter over to the location we can go to the 3d mode if I right mouse click just on this contour I can simulate just the that particular cutting process and not both and you can see where it's going to start is right at that location and it continues the pass process so that wraps up our second video when we come back our third video is going to be the post-processing uh, and uh, we'll go through that uh, process here next. Have a great day. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs>